Hey guys, I'm Kaya, and I want you to break out the bubbly, put on the Post Malone, and say congratulations because you made it through 2017. It was a pretty huge year for us nerds. Hollywood made some big moves, and a lot of their gambles really paid off. But for every Spider-Man homecoming, there are about six more Geostorms. We're going to talk about the bright spots later this week, but we wanted to dish on all the bad stuff first. That's why our very first end of the year awards are all about the worst of 2017. <laughs> We're not doing anything formal like ranking every movie. Instead, we're going for the high school yearbook approach with a few superlative awards, like our very first category, shittiest CGI villain. Nothing drags down a superhero movie like a weak villain, and we've seen some extremely lame bad guys on both sides of the aisle. But this year, Marvel bucked the trend with more memorable antagonists like Ego, the Vulture, and Hela. I mean, more memorable than the faux Mandarin, the dude with the yellow jacket, and that drow from Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, from Thor. Same thing. Whatever. They're taking one step, but I'm still like, talk to me when you get to Joker Dark Knight level. It's... There's no doubt this year's MCU villains were a step up, but DC hasn't quite figured out that piece of the puzzle yet. Even an awesome movie like Wonder Woman boiled down to a CGI slugfest at the end. Our runner-up Ares started out interesting. He spends most of the movie in his human form with a decent little mystery surrounding his true identity. Then when it's time for the final battle, he just transforms into a big Sauron knockoff for 15 minutes with green screen punching. At least we got to see Ares' human side, unlike our winner, Steppenwolf. I understand why they wanted to save Darkseid for a Justice League sequel. He's basically the final boss of the DC universe. He's also more or less the same character as Thanos, just without the butt face. Even though Darkseid came first, I get that you want to avoid as much comparison to Infinity War as possible. But it's completely baffling to me why they chose his uncle Steppenwolf as the force that unites the lead. Just imagine if the villain of a Star Wars movie was some random Imperial general. We were this close to providing peace and security for the galaxy. You're confusing peace with terror. Well, you have to start somewhere. All right, all right. I guess they pulled it off, but that's because they were well-written roles performed by excellent actors, not a dude yelling in a studio with a bunch of mocap dots on his face. I mean, at least Snoke isn't even trying to resemble Andy Serkis. I think studios vastly overestimate the star power of a CGI villain that vaguely looks like someone you've seen on TV, but hopefully Thanos has some depth, I mean depth, when we finally get to know him in 2018. Up next is the award for Failius Franchise. After the MCU debuted 10 years ago, every big studio in Hollywood wanted in. 2017 was the year we started seeing some of those plans come to fruition, most of which hilariously shat the bed at the box office. It wasn't all bad. Legendary Pictures Monsterverse might have some legs thanks to the strong showing by Kong Skull Island. And Justice League, while not being the Avengers killer DC was hoping for, has at least given the DCEU a decent platform to grow on. But for every successful start, there are a dozen more franchises that begin dead in the water. The big wigs behind Power Rangers must have been on a sugar high from all those Krispy Kreme donuts. Krispy Kreme, this is a special place. Because they were talking about a six movie story arc before their reboot bombed. I give it two thumbs down. Me too. Me Remember the Guy Ritchie King Arthur film? It was a beautiful movie with amazing fight scenes and Littlefinger and Dumbledore are in it and I wish more people besides me actually saw it. Maybe if they did, the studio would have gotten to make their planned cinematic universe with every member of the round table. Everything's so clear. I, I can see. I can fight. There you go. But even that's not as tragic of a flop as our winner, Tom Cruise's two hour long midlife crisis called ah. The Mummy. Ah. Yo, first off, f this movie. It was supposed to jumpstart the dark universe, a planned cinematic universe starring Universal's classic stable of monsters. That is way too many universes for one sentence, which kind of tells you what a whole mess this whole thing is. The studio had already figured out the concept back in the 40s with all kind of crossover movies like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman and House of Dracula. But this time around, they just decided to blatantly copy the Marvel formula. Who are you? I'm a doctor. The Mummy introduced its own S.H.I.E.L.D. knockoff called the Prodigium and revamped Dr. Jekyll as a second-rate Nick Fury. Welcome to Prodigium, Mr. Morton. From the latter, Monstrum Bell Prodigium. A warning of monsters. It's bullshit. The entire movie was bullshit. Also, f you, Universal, for getting my hopes up, not once, but twice. Like, first Dracula, now this. Like, Christ, Jesus. I just can't. 
cannot believe they built this movie up and they're like, we're gonna launch them this fucking unit. Can you imagine a horror movie cinematic universe? This is what I wanted. And this is what they took from me. I'm so no. I was so excited and they ruined it. The Mummy was laughed out of the box office and the dark universe was DOA. Look, we're never rooting for something to fail, but sometimes it's hard not to laugh at Hollywood's hubris. Welcome to a new world of gods and monsters. When your movie is shitty like The Mummy absolutely was, you're not gonna change our minds by jamming a 20 minute infomercial in the middle. Our next award is for Most Awful Adaptation. 2017 wasn't the biggest year for original ideas. Besides awesome exceptions like Get Out, Hollywood continued to mine existing IP for ideas and the quality ranged from excellent to straight up awful. I don't remember much, just fragments. Stephen King's It dominated the box office and despite big differences from the source material, it stuck close to the spirit and the scares. Meanwhile, Ghost in the Shell sparked a lot of controversy to say the least, but the live action anime felt completely sterile next to the trailblazing original. Valerian was a noble experiment in translating a classic French comic to the screen, but the execution made no sense to American audiences. And Baywatch, well, not even The Rock could save the Baywatch movie. This is nothing you would say me, people. This is Baywatch. <laughs> but plenty of adaptations made bank at the box office. The completely unnecessary Beauty and the Beast remake might have been the highest grossing movie of the year, but it turned a crisp 80 minute story into a bloated slog that was twice as long as the classic original. It was. It was still a beautiful movie. And if anyone wants to fight me, they can add me. Everyone was beautiful, okay? You are the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. Nobody deserves you. That's why it's only the runner up for worst adaptation, just below another Stephen King joint called The Dark Tower. Condensing a sprawling eight book series into a single film is no easy task, but I can't imagine a worse way to go about it. The movie chops up bits and pieces from King's magnum opus and sprinkles them on top of a generic story that shits on the lore and loses everything that made the epic saga special. It's even more tragic because the casting is spot on and the trippy post-apocalyptic fantasy of the books is the perfect setting for a cinematic epic. Above all, The Dark Tower is a huge waste of potential. It could have been the birth of a massive series that tied every Stephen King adaptation together, but it's going to be a long time before we pass through the door to Midworld again. The Dark Tower just barely missed out on our last award, The Biggest Disappointment. For the most part, movies in 2017 lived up to our high expectations, or like Logan and Wonder Woman blew them away. But despite all the triumphs, the year crushed plenty of fans' hopes and dreams. I know I was really looking forward to Alien Covenant, but all it added to the series was a baby xenomorph and Michael Bassbender's sexual chemistry with himself. And, no spoilers, but judging from the extremely polarized reaction to The Last Jedi, a lot of fans are not happy with the way the Star Wars galaxy is heading. Still, the reviews are solid and it's making plenty of money, so it can't be as big of a letdown as Justice League. It was supposed to reinvigorate the stumbling DCEU, and there's still a lot to like about it, but it will forever be defined by the utter fiasco around Henry Cavill's mustache. Not that I could notice, but hey, I'm just here to see a movie and not analyze someone's facial hair. I'm just here for a good time, guys. Yeah! I know there are tragic circumstances behind Justice League's uneven quality, and I really hope we get to see the mythical three-hour Snyder Cut at some point, but how can anything be more disappointing than some facial hair torpedoing an entire cinematic universe? Easy, just look in the mirror, because you're part of the same species that created our winner, the Emoji Movie. Spoiler alert, we still hate it. Until 2017, humanity had a pretty decent thing going. We came down from the trees and learned how to speak, to think. We built great wonders and vast civilizations. We even landed on the moon. Then we made the Emoji Movie and well, we had a good run. Where am I? Candy Crush. It's one of the laziest, most cynical cash-ins ever committed to screen. And while no one really thought it would be any good, I expected more out of the human race. I wanna know how they have kids. Cause he has parents. I, I like I know how f food has kids cause they fucked at the end. There was an orgy. That makes logical sense now. I was bummed enough that nobody bothered to see the masterpiece that is Blade Runner 2049. And I'm a little freaked out by everyone being so giddy about Disney swallowing up Fox. I mean, yes, I'm excited for the MCU, but I'm also just like, fuck my wallet. But it took Patrick Stewart debasing himself as a pile of poop to make me lose all hope. That's because I believe in you. Should we wash our hands? <laughs> no, no, no. We're number two. 
It wouldn't be too hard to restore my faith in humanity though. Honestly, this was actually a pretty awesome year for film, and there's even more excellent stuff on the horizon. But even though 2018 looks like an extremely promising year, I still think we'll have plenty of fodder for next year's Worst of Awards. I'm looking at you, 50 Shades Reed. Hey guys, thanks for watching our first ever Worst of Awards. We've got the best of coming soon, but first we need to know, are there any awful movies we missed? Are there any movies on here you actually liked? I mean, I actually liked a lot of them, and I'm sure you do too. Let us know in the comments below. Have a happy new year, and please subscribe to Now This Nerd.